what's impressed you the most about this senior class that you've been with for the last three years? Leadership. You know, we've got uh, as good a leadership as I've been around. Um, you know, sometimes when things are great, leadership isn't really uh, tested quite as much as it is uh, when, when, you, when things aren't going the way you'd like them to when you're, when you're hitting some, uh, facing some adversity. And I just, I love the way that our seniors have handled um, the season, you know, our record not being what we'd like it to be, obviously. Um, you look at a guy like Kevin Brennan, who's, who's uh, been hurt most of the year, obviously out for, for the re remainder of the year, just the way that he's gone about his business and stayed plugged in and, and continued to lead uh, our players. Just the, uh, I'd say the leadership and just the, the resiliency of this group, um, you know, the ringleader of that obviously being uh, Diego. Um, so yeah, it's really proud of the way that they've, they've stayed together, kept our football team together. You know, I've been uh, a part of teams when, when things didn't go well, uh, where things started to splinter a little bit, and uh, that hasn't been the case here. And um, I'm really, really grateful for uh, for these seniors and the way that they've led our program. How rewarding has it been for you coaching a player like Diego, who has that leadership both on and off the field, and the type of talent he is? You know, a ton. I mean, I can't I can't say enough good things about him and, and what he's done and how he's. Um, He's always been a leader for us, but even, you know, coming into his senior year um, through the pandemic last year, I think he's really matured and grown uh, in that role. I think our guys look up to him and, and uh, said this before, you know, he's he's our bell cow. Um, and, you know, things can easily go south, you know, in, in, a, in a season like this. Uh, but I think, you know, part of the reason it hasn't is, is obviously because of those guys, but also you guys see that we're really close to being to being pretty good. Uh, a couple of breaks go our way. Things can be very, very different. So just love the way they keep coming to work. You know, this this week of practice, last week of the bye week, uh, didn't look any different than did the first week of, of the season uh, to me. So uh, just continue to work and being a great example to our young players. It's a great benefit um, to us coaches to have guys like that in the program. And, and that's what that's so special about this place. Uh, it's usually no different than that. Uh, but I think this year is pretty exceptional. And seeing how Diego's developed since playing so much and being counted on as a sophomore. You've got so many players that are being counted on as sophomores this season. Uh, does that bode well for this team, seeing how players like Diego have developed that were called upon playing at such a young age? I think so. Uh, and I think, you know, we got a lot, a lot of guys like him playing as sophomores and freshmen that, that uh, you know, see his example and uh, learn from that and, and hopefully that, you know, he leaves a legacy here and that, that leadership's carried on with some of those younger players uh, for sure. Thanks a lot, coach. Yes, sir. Uh, Phil Bergman. Uh, coach, specifically about the game on Saturday, can you touch a little on uh, the running backs and on the quarterback for ECU? Yeah, another big challenge for us. I think they're uh, uh, a team that's playing their best football right now. I think they've gotten a little bit better every week. I think they're starting to uh, gel uh, uh, even more so as an offense as of late. You look, with, look at what they were able to do last week against Memphis. I think they had over 100 snaps in the course of that game, converted 18 third downs. Uh, they're a team that, that uh, is playing together, and staying on track. I think the offense coordinator does a really good job uh, with his play call and keeping people off balance. Um, with those running backs that you mentioned, they're both really good players. Have the ability to run the football and, and uh, the quarterback, you know, third year as a starter in that in that program. Uh, he's a savvy vet, makes really good decisions. Um, and when he gets when he gets rolling, he gets a hot hand. And you know, I said this before, he's as good as any quarterback we'll see all year. Uh, but big, can throw it, sees the field well, um, and can run it uh, when they need him to. Uh, design runs um, or him improvising when the, when the protection breaks down or, or receivers aren't open, his ability to run the football. Uh, he's a big physical guy too now. He's not he's not sliding a whole lot. You see him run run guys over and, and uh, just really good football player, good team. I think they're a tough team. I think the head coach there has, has created a culture. Uh, those guys play really hard. Um, and uh, you see that on the, on the film. Um, and then lastly, just about senior day, what's your favorite moment about senior day? Favorite moment for you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just recognizing those guys every year. It's, it's a special day. Um, you got a football team that, that, 
that cares about each other as much as these guys do. Um, it's fun to watch those guys go out and, and play for those seniors, you know, and let, let their play on the field reflect how much they care and appreciate those guys, care about and appreciate those guys. And so I think that piece of it uh, is nothing that, uh, there's no special moments that stuck out to me other than just what it means and how important it is uh, to our guys. And I've been to other places and we have senior days, but it just doesn't carry the same weight that it does here. I think everybody recognizes what those guys have given to the program, what they've been through, how hard they've worked. Uh, and it's, it's their way of going out and, and playing for those guys. Uh, and I think we'll, we'll, and you look at our record here on senior day is pretty good. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited about that piece of it. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Uh, Bill Wagner. Uh, Coach, you referenced uh, Kevin Brennan. Obviously, we found out yesterday that it's season's over, that he had surgery, and that's it for him. Um, I was under the impression there was a chance he was going to get back. It, it, did you all realize from the beginning it probably wasn't going to happen, or was there still waiting for further prognosis? No, not not quite right from the beginning. I mean, it didn't look great, to be honest, Bill. Um, and we were hopeful there for a little bit. But uh, it obviously it's super disappointing um, for him. You know, he's a guy that's worked extremely hard and, and done everything that he's been asked to do here and, and made a great contribution to our program and for his, his senior year to get cut short. Uh, just, just didn't real fair. You know, so disappointed for him, and, and certainly it you know, hurts our football team with him not not being a part of it, not playing. Uh, but he's handled it like the kid he is, man. He's uh, uh, I don't I don't know that I'd have handled it as well as he has, but he stayed engaged. He's he's in my position meeting today, taking notes. And how many guys that you know of that that are done for the season uh, would continue to do that in a meeting? And he does that because he wants to help the younger guys and want, wants to make sure he's plugged into the game plan and. He's a guy on Saturday that'll be talking to those guys in between series, just like a coach. And uh, so, really, I uh, can't say enough good things about Kevin uh, as a person and, and just the way he's handled the adversity. Um, just really, really impressed with, with him. Well, that's what Chance Warren was saying. He's a guy that's put his heart and soul into Navy football. I mean, Chance said one year he was rooming with him and he woke up at 5 30 in the morning and Kevin was already gone. He was over at the building watching film. Um, yeah. it's just got to be particularly brutal for a guy like that who, like you said, has committed everything. I mean, yeah. for him not to be able to play on a senior day or against Army Navy as a senior, it's just – it's awful, man. Yeah, it's, it's really – it really is gut-wrenching. And he's the kind of kid that, you know, I'd be here at night after practice watching film or uh, that kind of deal at 9 o'clock, he'd come in and shut the door and be in a meeting room. Um, and, you know, he, he's not showing up because other people are in the building. He's doing it because, because – you know, he loves football and, and wants to be as good as he can be. And, and I know um, he's going to he's going to be successful in whatever he does because of the kind of work ethic that he has. And, uh, you know, I, they say how you do anything is how you do everything. And, and uh, that certainly applies to him. Another guy I'm writing about is um, Mitchell Johns is a linebacker who's uh, working with the scout team. Coach Nehemiah kind of applauded him for being a senior who you know, helps with the scout team as a leader of the defensive scout team. And I know you're not involved with the defensive scout team, but I mean, do you have any thoughts on a guy like Mitchell Johns, who as a senior is that doesn't play is still trying to do good things for the program? Yeah, I do. Uh, he's done a great job. Hasn't complained, come to work every day. Um, you know, the, we've all got our, our roles to play uh, from our staff to our players and to have a good football team. Um, and, and a good organization, everybody has to embrace that role. Um, and they may not like it, um, but it, it, by embracing that role, it helps us, us be better as a football team. He's certainly done that and uh, really, really proud of the way he, he's handled that. Because uh, it's not easy you know, to be a senior and go down there, but hasn't complained. Uh, has gone down there to make those guys better every day. And, and he's certainly fulfilled his role and uh, really proud of the way he responded to that. And last for me for now, um, you talked last week about the running game, and I didn't realize when I spoke to you. I mean, I know that the Davis kid was the American Athletic Conference Rookie of the Year last year. He ran, broke loose for a 90-yard run against you guys last season, or 80, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, and he's not even the leading rush. This new, this freshman is almost up to 1,000 yards. Can you talk about what you have to do to try to stop this team's running attack? Because you mentioned last week that it all starts with that, that 
the rest of their offense flows off of being able to establish the run. Yeah, well, they do some good stuff in the run game. Uh, I think it starts with us, you know, swarming the football and and uh, playing great up front. We got to win a line of scrimmage. Uh, we've got to fit things correctly. We've got to leverage the football. Our gap integrity has to be on point because uh, if it's not against this crew. Um, they'll hit a seam and they'll get going. Uh, both those running backs are really good players, and uh, they both have the ability to, to break a 90 yarder if you don't fit things right. Um, both break tackles. Um, so we, we're going to have to do a really, really good job of, of being where we're supposed to be. Like I said, leveraging the football, fitting things correctly. Um, there were a couple of times last year where uh, we didn't fit things correctly, and that was the one long run that they had. And uh, so we got to do a better job of that this year than we did uh, last year. John Schofield. Hey, Coach. John from Sing Second Sports. I was wondering how you felt about having the bye week after Notre Dame. What did you focus on and how did it allow you to kind of look at the end of the season here? And maybe that's what you're doing as a final two game stretch before Army. Did it give you a chance to to refresh some guys? I know that Wags talked about Brendan being lost for the year. Did it give the team a chance did you have some other nagging injuries that that you needed to, to get healed a little bit before you went into East Carolina? Yeah, you know, it's uh, John, it's tough to have a bye week after you lose because you've got to sit on that. You know, I always hate that uh, going into a bye after you, you lost a game, um, especially when you don't, don't feel like you played really well and could have done some things better. But um, in regards to just our, 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 our health and our bodies and all that stuff, it couldn't have come at a better time. We needed to break, and, and Coach Nehemiah's really good about having a pulse on our team and, and uh, knowing what they need. And so we were able to practice last week, but also gave them, uh, you know, some, some time off to let their bodies recover, which, which they all needed, uh, needed that break. And uh, we probably did too a little bit. It gave us a chance to go out and do some recruiting as well, which we needed to do. And so, um, but, yeah, it was good. We had a couple of good practices last week, and um, it's just a, a chance to, to get refocused uh, catch our breath a little bit and uh you know we still got a lot to play for and, and our kids are they're going to go out and compete and play to win and um we got a good really good ecu football team coming in here on senior day so this is a big important game and, and, uh, and our kids are excited about the challenge and uh, looking forward to it one follow-up from me and then i'm done you mentioned recruiting how has it been in the midst of a difficult season you know how, how is the feedback been for you in terms of recruits, in terms of the Naval Academy football brand? Um, has it been more difficult? Has COVID made that a bit more of a challenge? Characterize how you're pushing forward in the midst of a very difficult season to make sure that there's success beyond. Yeah, well, I think um, you know, what's hard about COVID is is not not getting out, getting on the road. Uh, you know, the past year and a half and, and being able to get into schools and, and see kids in person. And uh, it's one thing to talk to a kid on the phone or a Zoom call. It's another thing to see them in person. It's also another thing to get those kids onto your campus and, and to get them around your players and your staff. And that's what sells this place the most, you know, uh, outside of the Naval Academy being what it is. And so, uh, no, I don't think it's been, you know, it's obviously been a challenging season, uh, but the, the commits that are, uh, that are with us are, are sticking, sticking with us. They see how close we are. Uh, I think they also see it as an opportunity to come in and, and help our program too. And uh, so uh, we've continued to stay positive and, and uh, it's, it's not been any different uh, from me recruiting uh, than it was, you know, after an 11 two season, truthfully. I think we talked about this last year, but refresh my memory. Did Graham Harrell replace you as D coordinator at Kennesaw? Blake Harrell. Yes, he, he sure did. And so obviously he, he faced the option last year and, you know, I'm sure that Coach Houston hired him because they had seen the option at, at Kennesaw, just similar to why Coach Nehemiah hired you to go against Air Force and Army. Um, any anything that you saw about what he does to defend option, and you know, is it because it's did his one year at Kennesaw seem to help him in that regard? Well, he was he was with Houston uh, at previous stops, and uh, so they had a prior relationship. I think obviously having coached at Kennesaw and defended the option certainly helped. Uh, with that that decision and, and uh, Blake's a really good coach you know I've, I've gotten to know him over the years and I think he does a tremendous job and you watch them play defense you know when you watch crossover film uh, they play really hard they're, they're playing an aggressive style 
uh, of defense, and he's done a really good job there. And, and obviously having that experience was at the Citadel um, when they were running the option. Uh, was at Kennesaw, so he's very familiar with it, uh, as I was. Uh, I'm sure that factored in a little bit to uh, the decision to hire him there, uh, but just uh, he's, a, he's a really good ball coach. Just talk about senior day and the fact that it uh, probably seems hard to believe that it's here already. Uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. You know, obviously the time here flies. Um, I'm really excited to play, you know, my last game in Navy Marine Corps. And, uh, yeah, excited. Um, obviously, it's uh, been four years since the group of your class entered here. And at the time, it was, I think, announced 56 players. And now there's 25 left. Can you talk about, you know, it, it happens that you lose guys along the way. But can you just talk about all the guys that have, you know, that are gone and the fact that uh, the 25 that are still here have stuck it out and made it to the end? Yeah, you know, this place is very tough. Um, and for at least the 25 that are still here and, and with me, um, I'm proud of them for, you know, sticking through because staying here is hard, especially going through the COVID year that we had, uh, not really getting able to leave and things like that. Uh, and just all the challenges outside of COVID and, and just, you know, school and whatnot. Um, you know, people leave for their own kind of choice, for their own reasons. Um, but, you know, we, we, we as a class have always felt like we can't dwell on those types of situations and those choices and just kind of press forward. So. Well, that's what we talked to Chance Warren yesterday about that, about you are a class that signed your two for seven papers amidst the pandemic. Um, and apparently Coach Nehemiah had said that, that, you know, the program took some hits, players did leave or didn't make it in from prep school because of the pandemic. Um, can you just talk about that? Uh, the having to sign the papers amidst that very difficult time? Yeah, I mean, we can't really have any excuses. Uh, we're just kind of the hand that we were dealt with the pandemic and every and everyone just kind of entering the portal. Um, it, I mean, it was tough. Like, I mean, staying, staying here at the Naval Academy is already hard enough. Um, and then to add on top of that, no liberty, no in class, no person or no class in person. Um, which was, you know, awesome at first, but then I didn't really realize how terrible it really was just to kind of sit in your room all day. So, um, yeah, it was tough, but, you know, here we are. So last for me, why did you decide to sign them? You're here, you're already being talked about as a pro prospect. Um, you know, you could have decided to go to a civilian school where your chances might be better to get looked at and you wouldn't have to worry about, the pro scouts wondering what's going on with your military obligation, et cetera. Why did you decide to sign those papers and stay? Um, I think ultimately it came down to just the people and the, uh, the coaches and, and everyone that was around me here at the Academy, uh, the people that just kind of poured into my life uh, to get me to the place where I was. I um, mean, I had coaches contact me without even, you know, telling them that I was thinking about leaving or thinking about entering the portal and just again, reminded me, uh, the reason why I decided to stay here. Oh, thanks. John Schofield. Hey, Diego, John Schofield with Sync Second Sports. Um, I was wondering if you could walk me through a little bit more how challenging it's been for you on that side of the ball. Um, you know, how is it frayed at all? And I know what the answer is, but can you comment on the potential uh, that – you know, the success of the defense, which I know that you're viewing through a different lens because your record isn't what you want it to be. But, you know, has it, has it frayed the, the togetherness of the team with the defense, you know, being a little bit more successful and the offense having a tough time? How have you led both sides of the ball knowing that, you know, Michael Cooper and Chance Warren are the captains on that side? How have you and Kevin really handled this on the defense by trying to make sure that everyone sticks together during a difficult year? Um, I mean, for me, at least, I just kind of approach it. If you don't really have anything good to say, you probably shouldn't say it. And I was, you know, taught to me when I was a little kid by my mom. So uh, it's just something I still use today. You know, uh, the, the offensive situation is what it is. I mean, some games defensively, we're not playing well. I mean, if you look at the Marshall game, uh, a few other games, like we, we play well in the first half, we do all right in the third quarter, and then we just absolutely, 
you know, ultimately, you know, just end up giving up almost sometimes in, in, in the fourth quarter, which is pretty sad to see. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And it, it's just, I don't think there's any one thing that we've decided to do as captains. Uh, I think it's just to approach every single practice, every game, like, like if we were, you know, whatever, nine, nine and out. There, there's no switch in our approaches other than, you know, I think the coaches do a good job of addressing it. But other than that, we have that mindset of, you know, it doesn't matter what the offense does. We're going to try to play as hard as we can for each other on defense and, you know, for the offense as well. So. Quick follow up from me and then I'm done. You know, this is a unique week uh, for your teammates um, and for all your classmates at the Naval Academy is Thursday night. They all open a bunch of envelopes that, you know, kind of plot out the course of their future. Wags is talking about your two for seven papers and your potential service. What does that mean? And, and what have your memories been like in the past on service assignment night uh, when your teammates have figured out what they're going to go out and do in the fleet and the Marine Corps? Um, and, you know, walk me through you know, the, how special that is. I'm pretty sure they don't have anything like that going on at ECU this week, but you still you have a game to prepare for on Saturday. Walk me through your thoughts on service assignment. Yeah, it's just another... Um... Another awesome thing, kind of tradition here that we do at the academy. You know, obviously, once you graduate, you're going to serve in, in either the uh, Navy or the Marine Corps. Uh, when I was younger, I always thought it was, you know, it was always a pretty exciting day just to see some of those guys come back without any hair. Um, or, you know, just seeing other dudes come back all happy and giddy about whatever service assignment they got. Um, yeah, Thursday, you know, we'll probably cancel meetings, at least for the seniors. We, you know, go back to our company and they kind of tell us what's going on. Uh, service assignment wise uh, but I, I don't know I mean it's just another day in the life I feel like for me uh, I kind of I've always been a Marine Corps officer in my mind at least here at the academy so hopefully I'm not too surprised when I get that so there's nothing wrong with that thing saying surface warfare officer though Diego don't don't worry if it says that good things can happen <laughs> I'm done thank you <laughs> not for me man but all right <laughs> Scott Wyckoff. Yeah, Diego, what has it meant for you to be a leader on this team, both on and off the field? And what of that will you be able to benefit from as a Marine Corps officer? I mean, I think the biggest thing I'll take away is just uh, learning from the challenges. Uh, it's easy to lead when things are going well, um, but I think it's very tough and, and you know, you know harder to lead when things aren't as what you thought they were going to be or what you plan to be. Um, so, you know, moving forward and, you know, if I don't get a chance at the NFL, if I, if I do go in the Marine Corps, uh, I'm right out of here. I think that just realizing, you know, not everything's going to work the way that you might hope it would. And, and this is even for life too, you know, it's just, it's funny how football relates to life so much, but um, you know, not, not everything's going to be, sunshine and roses and so just taking things day by day and just working through them as much as you can is, is probably what I'll take the most or take away the most what has coach Newberry meant to your career at Navy and the type of defense that you've been able to play in for him yeah uh, he, he means a lot to me uh, I feel like um, as a coach's perspective or at least from his stand, or from my perspective uh, he's really helped me out and set me up uh, for the most success that I can have here as a player. Um, you know, he puts in certain packages, certain blitzes, just uh, centered around me so I can kind of make some of those plays. Um, but, I mean, other than football, I mean, he means a lot because I feel like he cares. Um, I, I don't know if I can say that about every other coach um, in the NCAA just from stories I've heard. But, you know, as a person, I, I, I'd much rather him be – you know, everything he is off the field as much as he is on the field. So, um, yeah, he, he's just meant a lot, and I, uh, I don't take him for granted. Diego, uh, you're close to your parents. Uh, they're at a lot of games. Just what's that moment going to be like getting to walk down with them on senior night, give them a hug, and celebrate with them? Um, I, I, mean, I don't really know. I've never done it before so, uh, besides uh, in high school, but – I mean, it's just another part of the journey. I feel like, you know, they've been along with me or they've been on this ride with me. And um, I, don't know, I haven't really took too much time to think about it, to be honest. I've just kind of 
been practicing preparing for ECU. So, any of your siblings going to be here? Uh, not this time around. They're they're all trying to come to the Army Navy game. Okay. Uh, I guess switching gears to the football game, um, Ehlers, Ehlers, however you pronounce his last name. Uh, then you have Mitchell at running back, Harris at running back. Just what are you seeing out of that trio? Um, yeah, the quarterback. Uh, I mean, we've, I played against him like three or four times now. I feel like he's been there every year. So uh, he, he's definitely a veteran guy. He knows where to put the ball. Uh, he knows his checks. So they're really good uh, in scramble situations. Uh, he knows how to extend plays with his legs as well. Um, so it's definitely going to be a challenge trying to bottle him up and uh, rattle him a little bit. Uh, running back wise, they got two guys. Yeah, Harris is the kind of downhill, uh, hit you in the mouth type of dude. Um, and the other running back, number 25, he's more of the, uh, the scat back. Um, but they both uh, complement them or complement each other well. Um, so it, it would definitely be a challenge, just like uh, any other week here in the American. And last for me, if you're um, hoping to get Marine Corps, does that mean we'll expect you to have a shaved head come Saturday? That is correct. Yeah, I probably won't have any hair. <laughs> uh, best of luck this weekend. Thanks. For All right, I'll make one more trip around. Wags. Well, uh, Diego, I was going to write about a senior named Mitchell Johns, who's no, not playing, but has been working with the scout team and Coach Nehemiah and Coach Newberry praised him for, you know, staying dedicated to the program and doing his part. Um, I think he was an inside linebacker uh, in your room, so you probably know Mitch pretty well. What can you say about a guy who decides to come to practice every day and serve on the scout team as a senior? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough to uh, play in that role, uh, you know, playing any role but the starter. It, it is it is hard because, you know, ultimately you do want to be that guy. You want to be the one making the plays on Saturday. And uh, Mitchell has really blossomed into someone that I think we all respect on the team because of, you know, the choices and the decision that he makes every single day to, just like you said, show up and basically be on the scout team every afternoon. Um, you know, I've, I've known Mitchell ever since Naps. I've been through kind of everything with him, and he's one of my good friends. And so um, I think those guys are the most important dudes on the team because they're the ones that really embody the brotherhood. They're the ones that really make our team tick. And without them, I mean, they wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, train up the younger guys, train up the freshmen, the sophomores, whoever it is. So. I, I can't say enough about Mitchell Johns and just kind of how the way that he approaches everything. Thanks. Uh, John Schofield. Last one from me, Diego. Number one, uh, if that envelope says surface warfare, your head doesn't have to get shaved. That's a positive. Um, but hey, the, the biggest question I have is the alligators closest to the boat are East Carolina and Temple and then Army, but announced just this past week that College Game Day uh, from ESPN is going to do the Home Depot show from Army-Navy. We're fresh off of the Notre Dame game with amazing coverage, the Tom Rinaldi essay on Travis Manning and Brendan Looney, the Veterans Classic for basketball. You know, the, the brand has been getting out there, and the stories every year are so special. I just wanted to know, as you prepare for ECU, did you get a chance to see any of the stuff, any of the media that's been going on from the Notre Dame game, from the Veterans Classic? And what does it mean to you that the Army-Navy game is going to have the ESPN College Game Day crew there? Uh, to be honest, no, I haven't really seen much of the media stuff. I try to drown that stuff out. Um, you know, Army-Navy, having those guys come and I mean, they, they do that every year, so it's, it was not really a surprise to me. But, you know, it's really awesome to just see how they still, uh, by that I mean the college game day still wants to uh, come and, and support the Army-Navy game uh, every year. And so uh, it's just another opportunity to kind of have uh, some of those guys come and, and talk about Army-Navy and just how special those two service academies are because I don't really think most uh, kids nowadays really know what, service academies or if it's really a thing because I know I sure I sure know I didn't I didn't so uh yeah you know I'm just honored and excited to kind of have those guys come and talk about us